Hello everyone, my name is Leo Don Leon. I am an MTT coach of the Academy of Poker. And today is our first lesson and we'll talk about how to start winning poker in short terms. I hope that you hear me well and we can start. If you have any questions, you're free to ask. I'm reading our chat on YouTube. So, let's begin. Uh, you know, I have, during my work in Academy of Poker, I have more, more than 150 students and uh, they have common problems. Among them are, which tournaments are better? How much money do I need to play poker? They don't know where to play if they are just at the beginning of their poker career. They don't know how to work with software. They don't know where can they find useful information. And it's made important uh, question from them. They don't know how can they grow faster. And today during that lesson I'll try to answer part of the questions. And also, I'll try to communicate with you guys. First, if you want to start your poker career, you you have, you need, and you have to decide why do you play poker. Do you play for entertainment, entertainment purposes, or just for get some income? If, for example, you want to change your regular job for poker? Yeah, in that case, you need to be a little bit different to poker than if you're playing just as a hobby, just for entertainment. So, if you're chosen poker as entertainment, first you need to admit it. Because it's not so easy to say, okay, probably I'm a losing player and I don't worry about it. Because sometimes people are thinking, okay, I'm a losing player, I need to change it, I need to work hard, but I have not a lot of time. I have a job, I have a family, I have another hobbies, and it's really, it's really annoying that you can't do anything with it, but you still like to play poker. So the solution here is just to admit that you're playing poker as an entertainment. If you're going to the cinema, you're paying something as an entry fee, yeah? The same is poker, if you're playing for entertainment. You can just pay a little every month or every year. Sometimes you can get some bonuses from it if you'll win a tournament or something. So don't worry about it. And don't play for your last money. It's too important because um, some people are uh, having the problems with that part of uh, their poker career. They just uh, using Ludo approach. They just like to gamble, and yeah, even they can play for their last money. Again, if you we'll compare uh, poker with the cinema, I don't think that you'll go to the cinema for your last ten dollars or 10 euros, or 10 rubles, who knows. So, in poker, the same. Please, don't play for your last money, especially if you're playing poker as entertainment. And also have fun. Because if it's your hobby, you need to get something from it. If not money, then at least some fun. Speak with your opponents, watch some interesting videos, Try different interesting moves, do something and have fun. If you're choosing poker as a source of income, first again you should admit it. And you need to think about it and you need to do something. First, in that case poker is your job. And if it is your job, you have to do something and you need to work on your game. If you're interested in education, if you're interested in that stuff, in working in poker sphere, our course is perfect decision for you. It includes four group lessons, strategy for MTT, basics of poker mass, poker software and hand review, and two individual lessons. On your individual lessons you can do whatever you want. You can discuss hands, you can find leaks, 
tr at least try to do it. You can get answers for your questions and so on. By the way, our lesson about strategy for entities is starting tomorrow at the same time. And you'll be working with our second coach, Marcus Murgis. And we'll talk a little about him a little bit later. But let's move back to our today's topic. Uh, another interesting point that you need to think about is time. Because it depends really which type of uh, poker games you need to prefer if you have different amount of time. So if you have three or four times a day, I suggest you to play turbo tournaments or multi-table sitting goes. It's a type of tournaments where you don't uh, need to wait for 1k players to enter. You can just play with the limited amount of players. 90 players, 180 players or even 45 players. So uh, your average session length will not be uh, longer than 4 hours. And if for example you're working as a poker player and it's your job and you have 8 or 10 hours a day, you can prefer uh, regular speed tournaments. And yeah, in that case your sessions can be even longer than 10 hours. But you need to choose first and then it will be not a surprise for you. Uh, types of MTTs. Again, it's do important to understand which type of tournaments are better for newbie players and which are not. Because our today's topic is how to win poker in short terms. Yeah? And if you'll not uh, take some time onto that part of poker sphere, if you'll play different types of MTTs and it'll be okay for you, you'll waste your time and probably you'll waste your money. So, uh, I would say that the best kind of tournaments for newbie players is freeze-out tournaments. Because in that type of tournaments you just have only one chance to win. So if you lose all your money, if you'll be busted, you don't have any options just to leave the tournament and to start another one. The plus here for newbie players is that on the late stage of the tournaments there are not so many reg players because they also can be busted during the early or mid-stage of the tournament. If, for example, we'll compare that type of tournament with the re-entry tournaments, where you can enter again after your busting, probably rec players will be... I mean, the quantity of rec players will be much higher than the freeze-out tournaments, because if it was an unlucky coin flip for a rec player, he'll just make re-entry and continue playing. And if he is having a edge over the field, he will win. Ah, sorry guys. Uh, next. Next type of tournament is KO tournament. I think that it is second best kind of tournament for newbie players, because in that kind of tournaments, um, the tournament prize pool is divided into two parts. One is similar to freeze out tournament and the second part is a KO part so you can get a little amount of money for busting every opponent so you can even uh, take back your buy-in even, even not reaching the ITM zone just because you have you can bust some opponents some players uh, satellites again uh, it is the I would say third, third best type of tournaments for newbie players, because using satellites you can win tickets into larger tournaments. You can win tickets like for the online tournaments, also uh, in an offline tournaments too. Even you can win not only a ticket but also your uh, living. I mean, the hotel, the transportation, and some money for that stuff. Uh, but you need to be careful here that if you are playing satellites, uh, you need to get through double dispersion. Because first you need to win a satellite, and second you need to win at least get into the money in your target tournament. And if you are playing with a direct buy-in, you have like only one one level of dispersion because you need just to get into the money, and that's all. 
and that light it doubles up. And the last type of tournament is rebuy tournament, where it is possible to make two, three, five, ten re-entries, and after some period of time, at normally it's like one and a half hour, as the add-on period comes, where you can add some more money. And for rebuy tournaments, it's important to have a rule for you. For example, if you're a newbie player, I suggest you to have to stick to the rule one rebuy, one add-on. It means that you're entering the tournament, you have one chance to make a rebuy. If you, if you have been busted two times, you are finished. You are closing the tournament. And if you survived till the add-on period, you are doing that add-on. It's do important because normally add-on is uh, giving you more chips than you can get for your rebuys, especially if you're playing splash tournaments, where your starting stack is 3k, and with the add-on you can get 30k. So yeah, if you are not uh, picking that, if you're not clicking that button add-on, you are losing your position in the chip count. So I think it's pretty clear. If you don't have any questions, we can continue. Bankroll management. Again, if you want to know how to win in poker, you need to be safe with your bankroll management. It helps you to protect yourself from losing your bankroll. Bankroll is amount of money that uh, you decided to spend on poker. You can spend it on your education, or on your buy-ins, whatever. But you need to know that the minimum amount of buy-ins is at least 200. Because if you have, for example, 50 buy-ins, and you can be unlucky for one month, for example, you can lose all your money. And if, for example, you don't have an opportunity to make another deposit, in that case, you'll have to, to finish your poker journey or to play, I don't know, free rolls or try to get through the satellites or something. But I think it's not the worst case scenario, but it's not the best one. So just be careful here and have at least 200 average buy-ins. If you're playing a tournament, for example, from $3 till 11 I suggest you to have at least 1k. $1,000. And if you are playing uh, turbo or hyper turbo tournaments, in that case, I suggest you to have at least 300 binds. Because the dispersion is higher, your ROI is lower, I mean, it's more difficult to beat that turbo tournaments, if, even if you're a skilled person, just because you'll have to go all in uh, more frequently than in regular speed tournaments. I think with the bankroll management it should be clear again because it's almost the most important part uh, for beginners to have a huge bankroll. You know, uh, I am playing poker for more than four, year, four years and I have found out that for myself uh, the most important is to keep myself in safe. I mean, I am playing with a bankroll management of 600 buy-ins. Because for me, uh, because I am playing a lot, it's too difficult to lose during one session uh, 70 or 80 uh, buy-ins. Just imagine that if uh, your bankroll is 200 buy-ins and you are losing third part of your bankroll during one session. It's a big strike. And it's really difficult to hold it. So I prefer to have really conservative bankroll management, but it is suitable for uh, not micro stakes, but at least mid stakes. You need to be careful if you're a professional player. If you have an opportunity to refill your bankroll if you're losing it, okay, you can play with 100 or 200 buy-ins. But yeah, it's it's important to not to forget it that you must have a rule about it. Um, I have said that we'll be talking about our second coach, Marcus Murgis, and about his little story. 
If we move back to the previous slides and we were talking about the bankroll management and the quantity of buy-ins that you need to have, uh, I didn't say one uh, one point here that except of that quantity of buy-ins, you need to play a lot to decrease dispersion. You can visit a website primedope.com or you can visit our tomorrow's lesson and Marcus will show you how your dispersion depends on the quantity of tournaments that you are playing during one month or one year. If you are playing 50 tournaments with the ROI of 15%, the possibility of finishing the month with a negative result is more than 50%. Like every second month you'll be losing your money. I don't think that is a good decision, yeah? So uh, I suggest you to play at least 400 tournaments. But how can you do it? How can you play that? You should think about choosing between online and live. But first, about Marcus. You know, uh, when we were opening our new office in Prague, in Czech Republic, we were searching for him. And Marcus is a German poker player. He's living in Bremen. It's Marcus. <laughs> you can see him tomorrow. Uh, I think without that green head, but still. And uh, I was looking for a coach in Prague. And accidentally, Marcus was going to Prague, because there his girlfriend is living. And we have met each other. And I decided that Marcus is pretty suitable for our company. He is a um, pretty strong player. And also he knows how to give you the information in the most easiest way. So now he's working in our company in the Academy of Poker. And about life and online. You know, Marcus has told me a story when uh, he was uh, playing at home. It was an Easter and uh, he was playing poker with his friends. And one of his friends uh, suggested to visit the casino because there was a huge tournament. It was Easter tournament. Yeah, <laughs> interesting, yeah. So uh, they have gone to the casino and Marcus were playing for more than six hours. Uh, he was running pretty well, he had a huge stack and right on the stone bubble he got uh, pocket queens for, if I'm not mistaken, 30 big blinds or something. Uh, he raised, got three batted, he 4-bet, shoved, and get called by pocket 4s. It was some drunk man, and he didn't care about his cards. He just said that, oh, Marcus, you have an ace king. So, let's play a coin flip, right on the stone bubble. And it was a king from queen from flop, so Marcus hit a set, but 4 on turn, 4 on river, and Marcus lost versus a quads. So he lost six hours, he lost his binds, and when he moved back to his house, he said, No way, I will not play life anymore, because I'm spending too much time for it, and it's really possible to lose all my money during all my binds during one day. And don't get anything. So if I'll be playing live, uh, it will be really difficult for me to get some good distances. To play 200 tournaments a month, 400 tournaments a month. And Marcus decided to play online. And online is much better. Just because, as you can see on the picture, you can play 4 tables in one time, 6 tables. For example, I am playing from 12 till 15 tournaments in, uh, simultaneously. So I can easily play more than 500 tournaments in a month. That's why life is not so good as online. Of course, now Marcus is playing higher, playing stronger, and he is playing life too, but not as he is thinking about life game, not as a source of income. He is playing life for uh, some entertainment, for his hunting for some um, some trophies, I'd say, and mostly he is earning money by playing online. So if you are choosing right now what 
if you are thinking about what to choose live or online, I strongly recommend you to start your career from online poker and then you can move to live. Uh, one more uh, question, one more, one more tip about difference between live players and online players is that I think that online players are stronger because they are more experienced. If you are playing live, you can play uh, 15 uh, hands in one hour and during playing online, during one hour, you can play 400 hands. So you are getting your experience faster. Do faster than playing live. And that's the main point. Also, uh, you need to understand how online poker works. Because uh, some players are thinking that online poker is tricky. And online poker rooms can cheat with you. Online players can cheat. So, let's take a look at the picture. Let's say that we are Marcus and we are a strong online player. We are getting, we are winning some money from people in internet, and then we are paying some rake for the poker rooms. This rake is included into buy-ins. For example, if you are playing eleven dollar tournament, uh, ten dollars are put in into the prize pool, and one dollar is taken by the poker room, like the payment for service that they are providing. So for poker rooms, it's do important to save you as a player in that poker room. If they'll be cheating you, if uh, they will um, try to steal your money, you'll leave that room and they'll not get any rake from you. So think about it. Poker room needs you. That's why it's... I, I can't uh, imagine any sense in cheating, especially if you're playing micro stakes. There are a lot of poker rooms, party poker, trade poker, poker stars, natural aid, and others. And um, I'll tell you a little about each of them. But first, you need to understand how online poker works. So we are playing poker rooms, are playing for the rake, and not for cheating. So, where can we play if we are just starting our career? First, the, the most important poker room and the most famous poker room is PokerStars. Advantages of PokerStars, high quality software. It's doing important because when I am starting my lessons with new students, I'm asking them, where are you playing? And they're answering, uh, I'm playing PokerStars. And uh, why? Because I like the software, I like to play from my mobile phone, or I like to play from my table, and um, I don't want to play that small rooms because their software sucks. But yeah, that's true. That PokerStars are providing the best software ever, and it's a big advantage. Next, uh, high guaranteed prize pools. What is guaranteed prize pool? It's important, and you need to understand what is it. Um, let's say that we are playing a tournament online with the buy-in of $10. And it is said that the granted prize pool is $100. And there are only 5 players. They have put $10 in the prize pool, each of them. So, in total, they have put $50. But it was guaranteed that the prizes will be for $100. So, in that case, Poker Room will pay using their own money, the prizes. And if you're playing poker stars, that guarantee is much higher than in different poker rooms, like, for example, 3-8 poker. Uh, the third advantage here is wide range, of, wide range of tournaments. If you're playing micro stakes, you need to select. You, you, you want to choose something, yeah? And uh, in that case, PokerStars provides you tournaments for every buy-in, starting from one cent and finishing with sky limits of 10k buy-in. Disadvantages. Really strong players, because everybody wants to play on a high software, high quality software, high guaranteed prize pools, and so on. So, you have to admit that you must be strong enough to face with strong players 
And the second disadvantage is high average field size. Average field size or AFS means how many players are usually playing the tournament. And the higher is FAS, uh, the more is dispersion. If you are playing, for example, only Sunday tournaments with a quantity of players of, I don't know, maybe 4 or 3k players, in that case, dispersion might be brutal. And if we'll compare it with the multi-table seating goals, where the average field size is 180 tournaments, uh, sorry, 180 players, in that case, dispersion will not be so sick for you. So, just you need to make the right choice. Let's talk a little about party poker. I think it is the second um, popular poker room. And advantages. First is the really high probability of, giving, of getting overlays. Overlay means that the guaranteed prize pool were not beaten by the players. Like it was in the example where you have only 5 players who put only $50 in the prize pool and it was guaranteed 100 On party poker, you can really try to find that overlays and it's too important to entity players to play them. Also, I'll suggest you to follow Party Poker in uh, social media, because if they're having an overlays, they're always um, giving that information to players. Because for them, it's important not to have the overlays, so they need players, that's why they're advertising their overlays. And uh, for you, it's easy profit, because you can find that cool tournaments. Uh, the second point here is rakeback, until 40%. What is rakeback? We have been talking about uh, rake. It is the amount of money that is taken by Poker Room. And using some uh, loyalty programs, using some bonuses, Poker Room is giving back some part of that taken rake. And, for example, on Poker Stars now, rakeback is close to 3 or 4%, so you almost... You almost don't have a rakeback. And on party poker you can uh, even have 40% rakeback, but you need to be careful here that to get that rakeback you need to generate at least $1,000 rake per week. So you need to play, if not high stakes, but at least mid stakes. But at least you have that opportunity to get that high rakeback. On poker stars, uh, you don't have that opportunity. Then, a low average field size and weak players. Now you know what is average field size, so low average field size is an advantage. Weak players also is an advantage. And uh, next advantage here is party poker live dollars. It's a currency that was invented by party poker, and using that party poker live dollars you can pay not only uh, buy-ins for live tournaments, but also you can pay your living. So, in total, you can play satellites to that Party Poker Live dollars. You can accumulate them on your Party Poker account, and then you can spend them whatever you want, or where uh, live tournaments are holding on to Party Poker. Uh, so, this year I was playing in Rosvadov in Czech Republic, and it was, I, I don't remember the name of the series, but it was Party Poker series. I came to Rosvadov and I have paid using my Party Poker Live dollars not only for buy-ins, but also for a living, for a hotel. And also, if you're paying for the hotel in Rosvadov, um, you don't need to pay entry, entry fee for uh, entering the casino. So, not so bad. And disadvantages, I would say, about unstable schedule. It's a problem because um, if you're a professional player, you want to know what tournaments are you playing today, tomorrow, and next week. And if you don't have an opportunity to plan your schedule, if you're playing party poker, it's difficult to know what you'll be playing. It's obvious, yeah? Next, uh, 888 poker. Low average field size, weak players, opportunity to qualify to WSOP, because straight poker is a partner, official partner of WSOP. Disadvantage, small guaranteed prize pool. And last but not least, natural eight. 
Advantages. Low average field size, weak players, events, competitions, good rakeback system, but narrow schedule. And also small game to prize pool. If you're an MTT player, you need to be ready that if not now, but in the nearest future, you'll have to play two or three uh, poker rooms in one time because you need to select your tournaments. And if you don't know which tournaments are better for you, if you need some help to select the tournaments, you can visit our educational course that is starting tomorrow. Marcus will be your coach and he'll answer all your questions and he'll help you with that planning stuff. Also, you can ask questions on our individual lessons. If you're interested, don't forget to follow the link in the description and leave the application. But let's move back. Software. Nowadays, if you're playing online, it's too important to understand that there are a lot of different kind of software. First, trackers, like hold the manager hand to note or pocket tracker for uh, it's kind of programs that can track your hand history. It can uh, save your hands and then you can analyze it. Also, hold the manager is giving you the statistics on your opponent like during when you play. So, if you're not using hold the manager now, it's a big mistake. Also, calculators, Flopzilla, IC Miser, GTO solvers, they're also like calculators. All that stuff can be studied with the help of our company, with the help of our coaches, me and Marcus. During our group course, we'll talk about Hold the Manager, about Equilab, about Simple Nash, and during individual lessons, you can ask about IC Miser, Simple Post Flop, and Simple Pre Flop, if it's interesting for you. So, like a conclusion, how can I learn poker? You can try to learn poker from books, but I think that it's not the best idea, especially in 2019, because it's easy to understand that the strategy changes and what was really strong two or three years ago now is not working anymore. And if, for example, two years before open limping was like a fishing strategy. Now almost all strong players are using that um, that limp. So I'd say that books are not the best decision to learn poker. Vods, uh, it's videos about strategy, uh, videos about gaming, like live sessions. I think it's not the worst scenario because now there are a lot of different sources of vods. Also, you can visit our YouTube YouTube channel, for example, where you can find some uh, useful, interesting information in videos. So yeah, it's a nice source of information. Forums. You know, uh, two years ago it was too uh, interesting to post my hands on forums to discuss strategy with our players. But now forums are dying because it's easier just to have your small conference in Skype or Discord than make some posts on forums like 2 plus 2 or something. And uh, the last source of information is a coach. And I'd say that is the easiest one because um, coaches, as for me, for example, I am watching tons of videos, I'm watching tons of articles, and I'm working as a filter between that information and you. Because, of course, it's obvious that you can try to find that information yourself. But if you're a beginner, it's really difficult to understand which information is useful for you and which is not. And coach can help you. If, for example, you think that uh, hiring a um, coach for individual lessons is too expensive for you. You can try group courses or you can try our group course where two individual lessons are included. I'd say that it's pretty nice idea. So how can you grow? Look, this is Marcus's graph and his first 7k tournaments he was playing uh, with a positive result. But look, he was playing for more than uh, 
I would say 5k tournaments close to zero. It was the part of his career when he was starting using videos, using forums, and using some articles. Then he started working. <laughs> it's he. Uh, then he started working with software, and he has taken a coach. And look at his graph. He started winning, and the results are pretty nice. But what is important? Look, he has played. 15k tournaments yeah now you can see it and it takes a really long period of time for him and what if you want to start your poker career and you don't have the time you don't have a time to play 15k tournaments but you want to win right now in that case our educational course the academy of poker course is really your solution to grow faster we have four group lessons, strategy for MTTs, basics of poker mass, poker software, and hand review first. Strategy for MTTs is starting tomorrow at the same time. During our lessons, we'll be giving you all the useful information about how to start your career in MTTs, how to play MTTs. For example, you'll be given that poker charts for different positions to know which hands are suitable for raising and which are not. And also you'll have two individual lessons, they are included into our price. And during that lessons, you can do, as I said, whatever you want. You can make a hand review to find your mistakes. You can try to analyze your database with the help of our coach to try to find some leaks. You can have live sessions when you're playing, you're in contact with our coach, with me or Marcus, and we are telling you the truth about your mistakes. Or you can solve your software questions about, for example, how to work with simple post-flop. If you are not a newbie player, but an experienced one. Uh, in total, all that stuff costs almost 300 euros, but this month we have a special offer and you need to pay only 99 euros. And what is important, you need to pay only once. It's not like a subscription that you need to continue paying every month, no. You're just paying only 99 euros and you're getting access to all our videos, to all our lessons and you can visit our group course not only once, but you can go to our lessons again and again if you're interested. Of course, your personal, your individual lessons are limited. You can have only two of them, but what about group lessons? They are not limited. You can come and visit us and talk with us again and again and again. So, that's all for today. Thank you for coming. I hope it was interesting. If you're interested in our group course, then follow the link in the description. It's right below that video. Leave the application and see our coach Marcus Marcus tomorrow at the same time and start crushing multi-table tournaments. See you guys in the next videos. See you guys in the next videos.